Tom Herman's the new football coach with the Texas Longhorns, and it's interesting because, Tom, thanks for coming on the show, first of all. Nice to talk to you. Thanks, Colin. Appreciate you having me back. You know, Tom, it's interesting. Uh, Urban Meyer uh, is one of those coaches you work with him. His teams always play better in big games. And I, it's kind of a Pete Carroll's been like this. Pete may lose in the Pac-12 or to the Seahawks, but in big games, Pete's teams are unbelievable. Similarly at Houston, you may be upset from time to time, but your team's always played great in big games. What is the secret sauce to that? Urban does it, Pete does it, and you do it. Oh, I, I think one, to be honest with you, is uh, the acknowledgement that, that they are big games. I, I think I, I've, I've never been more frustrated uh, when I hear people playing for a championship or the Super Bowl and they say, well, it's just another game. No, it's not. It, it's not. It's a really big game. And, um, and then so you get that out of the way and, and you kind of talk about the elephant in the room, so to speak, and then. Uh, but then you say, okay, how do you do that? How do you win big games around here? And, and the answer is that you, you trust your training and you trust that you're um, the, the most prepared and well-trained team in America. And uh, if you got a little extra pep in your step because it is a big game, all, you know, all the, the better. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the acknowledgement of the fact that they are big games and then um, – the realization that you don't need to do anything different to win them. Uh, you just got to play really hard uh, the way that you're trained to do it. Listen, Texas, I've had two coaches who are really, really good coaches, really, really good coaches. And they've told me Texas is tough. You got a Longhorn network. You got your regents, all eyes on Texas, traditional pressure. When you take a job like Houston, many view it fair or not as a stepping stone. You look at Texas, and that's where you end your career. Did you ever talk to, again, Urban or a coach to let you know, ask some advice on when you take these traditional power jobs, Ohio State, Texas, Tom, it is different. I, I, I talked to Mac Brown, and uh, Mac told me uh, something that, that stuck with me. He says uh, the, the, uh, the great thing about the University of Texas is there's tens of millions of people uh, – that care uh, and support and care about what, what happens with Texas football. Um, the really hard thing about the University of Texas is there's tens of millions of people that really care uh, about what happens with the University of Texas football. And so um, I, I don't, I, I think your, your question is valid, but, you know, I've, I've always operated uh, under, you know, the, the, the assumption that, that pressure is that uneasy feeling uh, that you get when you're unprepared. And I've been preparing for a job like this my entire career. I've got a great staff with great people uh, around me that, that help uh, us be successful. And so uh, it, it doesn't matter whether we're at Houston or Texas or the, the Green Bay Packers. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, we're, we're capable of succeeding anywhere we go. I have always defended coaches who leave schools because I always say you fans want to fire them by the end of the first year if they don't go to a bowl game. So if a coach has some, you know, apprehensions about his future, you can't trust athletic directors. You can't trust the fans. The momentum turns. Similarly, I also defend players like Christian McCaffrey, who carries the ball 700 times for Stanford, saying it's not a top bowl game. I'm going to go to the NFL. I've given my heart to Stanford. It's a weird world because if, if, if I defend the players, and if I don't defend the players doing that, people say, well, what about coaches leaving? And I say to myself, well, that's why kind of I support coaches leaving and I support players leaving. But where do you land on this, Tom? Because there are those who argue that it hurts the fabric of a team, team building, if a player exits before a bowl game. Where would you land on that? Well, uh, again, and, and I don't mean to, to sound wishy-washy, but I, I – I understand both sides uh, of the argument. I really do. And, and uh, again, I always want what's, what's best for, for our players. And, um, you know, when, when Dante Foreman talked to me about leaving early for, for the NFL, yeah. um, I, I uh, obviously told him we would certainly, uh, we need him and, or we would want him back and, and um, we could do some really special things. But I also advised him, especially at that position, that running back, 
um, there's only so many carries on a running back's body. That's right. And um, if you've got an opportunity to go get paid uh, real money for those carries, then then you probably need to do that. And so, but I, I do understand, uh, you know, that the, the season isn't over either. And uh, so, uh, I, I get both sides. And to be honest with you, Colin, and, and not to, to stand on the fence, I, I really haven't had time today or last night really even to, to educate myself enough to, to give you a, a, a formulated opinion. And so I, I just would tell you right now that I, I get both sides. I, I am always for what's best for players, but I do understand uh, the other side of the argument as well. Charlie, Str- uh, Charlie Strong's the former coach, Tom Herman, the current coach at Texas. Charlie was a very good recruiter. You've got some players, but it really comes down in all these football games to quarterback play. Urban, your former, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess you're a disciple of Urban. When you look at quarterback play, there is a sense in the NFL, Tom, that college football's not given us many great quarterbacks, about one a year. When you look at high school football, is high school football giving you a lot of good quarterbacks? What's out there in America today for guys like you that take over a powerhouse and need a quarterback to win, regardless of the other talent? Well, it's it's the the hardest position, maybe in sports, to evaluate both in recruiting and then obviously in the NFL. What I mean, I think I, I've seen stats where uh, over fifty percent of first round quarterbacks in the NFL are busts and and. Uh, those guys, those scouts, those GMs get paid a lot of money. Uh, to, all they do is evaluate talent, and they still only get it right about half the time <laughs> on that position. And yeah. so um, it, it's very difficult to, to evaluate it. And I, I think you, you, at that position, you have to look at the, the intangibles, and you, you have to look at whether the kid's a competitor. Yes. Is he a, is he a winner? Is he, um, uh, you know, does he, is he a great leader, a great communicator? Is he, Football smart, you know. There's a difference between book smart and football smart, and then, and then you get down to oh, how big is he? You know, can he throw it hard or you know, with good velocity? All those silly things that really, at the end of the day, don't mean much uh, to to win in football games. And so, to answer your question, yeah, high schools are giving us great quarterbacks, especially with the, the advent of the spread. And uh, and I would argue that the the NFL, um, uh, you know the they get called coach for a reason too. And, and part of being a coach is, is developing players. And so, you know, our job in, in college football is not to um, be a farm league for the NFL. Our job is, is to, to win games and graduate players and uh, win championships in college football. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, there's a, uh, you know, there's a bit of a misnomer there that, and especially with, you know, spread offenses, I, there, there's differences in spread. You know, there, there's the, the the air raid guys that throw it 60, 70 times a game or whatever it is. And so, uh, you know, and some, some of the other forms of spread. But I think, you know, what we do, what uh, Ohio State does, what Clemson does, what, uh, you know, uh, Auburn does, we're pro-style offenses that just happen to be in the shotgun. We run back power. We run inside zone. We have progression reads uh, for the quarterback in the throw game and all of that stuff. We just happen to to do it in the shotgun and and make you defend the the quarterback run game as well. You're a member of Mensa, and I want to know, do you get an ID card? Do you get a plaque? Like, like what is, what do you get for being a Mensa member? What's the, what's the payoff? (laughs) Oh, uh, ridicule by guys like you that bring it up. (laughs) (laughs) That's, That's the payoff. No, I, I uh, again, it was uh, just a suggestion I had when I was in college filling out a resume that um, it would look good on a resume. And, and so uh, took the test and, and obviously qualified, put it on a resume and a lazy SID decided to, to put it on my bio. And then the, the next lazy SID that, that uh, was writing a bio of me just took my previous bio. And so it kind of followed me around. But, but to answer your question, uh, you get a card uh, <laughs> that, that I don't know where it is, uh, and then you, you get like a newsletter, uh, I think a quarterly newsletter, and you get invited to these different events, but 
in my 20 years as a member, I, I've never gone to a, a, a single event, I can tell you that. You get invited to annual Mensa events. I would die to go to one. You know, I, I would. That would be your highlight you know of the year. I would. You know what I imagine them being like, Colin? It's like the, the Star Wars bars. You know, like where, <laughs> where you, you've got all these different, you know, uh, shapes and sizes of people and it would be fascinating, and, and maybe one of these days I'll I'll go just to just to experience it. Do you get a plus one? Yeah. Pl- oh yeah. Take a guess. Colin, you could yeah. be the plus one. First of all, I would be sniffed out so fast. They would be like, "Who's Tom Herman? Who's the dumb guy he's with?" I couldn't even dress for a Mensa party, so I I am so unqualified. I, I barely know what it means. I had to look it up on Google. Tom <laughs> Tom Herman. Good luck to you, Coach. All right. Thanks for having me, Colin. Always a pleasure. Hook 'em horn.